Hello and welcome to the MBS Show Reviews and Discussion Podcast. I am your host, Norman Sanzo, and joining me today, and it's been a while, we miss you, buddy, Silver Quill. I've learned that I'm a geriatric millennial. Me! <laughs> How are you doing? I'm fairly old. Me! <laughs> it's been a while, man. It's been a while. It has been a uh, while. So, how's everybody doing? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Uh... Um, how, how do I even put this? Like, you know, I'm trying to find words like, oh, I'm doing great and whatnot. And, you know, honestly, yes. But at the same time, too, the pandemic has not gone away at all. <laughs> yes, it's hard to really uh, get in the groove. I mean, you could, but at the same time, too, when you're thinking like, oh, man, the weekends, I wish I could uh, stay at home, <laughs> eat my cereal, what the? <laughs> like, there's no difference then. <laughs> oh, there's a difference. One is a choice; the other is required. Ah, yes, that is true. That is true. But but the thing is, like, I uh, mean, it's been a while where I could go out and uh, watch a movie or uh, what you call this, go to a food stall and eat or something. I mean, it's one of those things where you just miss the good old days and stuff. And I know some places do allow eating in and restaurants and whatnot, but some, well, uh, we, we recently got our uh, government mandate to stay at home. <laughs> so, yeah, not doing that anytime soon. So, it's kind of, I, I kind of missed it, like going to a restaurant and having a food. <laughs> For a while there, takeout was the best I could manage. Yeah. Oh, but at the same time, too, have you heard services like Blue Apron or Green Chef or something like that? I mean, those kind of things also are kind of great. I don't have those services. I'm just hearing podcasts that uh, serve those services to the United States. So, yeah. Well, I haven't really taken advantage of those. A friend gave me a try for a uh, place called Dream Dinners, which was pretty good, although uh, I realized I had broken my measuring cup. So... Oh. It was oh. all. I I think it came out a little al dente crunch, but at the same time too. Um, uh, what uh, what was the delivery service kind of thing like? Um, oh yeah, you got Uber Eats. Uh, what oh, else is? Oh, there? I, I don't I don't use that. I'll do. Oh, you, you, you. I'll pick up at curb. I'll do takeout. The thing is, Uber Eats. Uh, the restaurants hardly get any money out of that. Oh, so those services don't really help those? Like, I remember one service, um, I'm forgetting, uh, DoorDash. DoorDash kind of, like, it's the same? I, I don't remember, but uh, if I remember right, like, they do well? I don't remember so sure. Uh, as far as I know, they, they too, it's not as clean or, or supportive as people might have hoped. I'd prefer the money go to the actual restaurants. Uh, all right. I mean, uh, that's, Good, that's awesome. But you know what? Let's get on to it. So, in today's episode review, we are going to review the My Little Pony comic issue number 89. Uh, well, in short, season 10, episode 1. And what was the subtitle for this one? Okay, uh, I, I, I just checked out the wiki page and the subtitle for it is or the episode name for this one. Oh my god, it's, it's going to be so strange. Uh, it's called The Pharasian Shores. Pharasian Shores. I'm trying to remember how they spelled it. It was like... It's not furry. Furry. Huh? F-A-R? It could be my accent. Yeah, it's F-A-R-S-I-A-N. Okay. I mean, if it, if you switch the I and the A, it'd be Pharasian Shores, but it's Pharasian. Ah, uh, Okay. Yeah, so the, the the title is not on the comic. Like, I, I just noticed that. Well, I guess because it's part one and really only a quarter of an episode. The the way I've heard it described at conventions uh, and the, the staff who's worked on this were, were very clear. One issue is basically half an episode. So it's basically 15 minutes. 15 minutes. And then, well, not even that. I mean, well, here in America, we got got to make room for commercials <laughs> that's that's what i'm thinking uh, that's what i'm thinking 15 minutes of um, maybe so because what uh no yeah it's half an hour so okay <laughs> 15 minutes yes <laughs> so a four-part issue is really a two-part opener yeah 
which is kind of the course. So yay. Yay. All right, then. So before we head into the review, first impressions are in order. And Silver, what do you think? I'm going to say of this, uh, are we doing just this single issue or the entire or the entire arc? You know what? Let's go for the entire arc because it's one of those things where if we go for single issues, it's just going to be muddy in the water because, yeah, stuff. Well, then I will say I really enjoyed this uh, this four-part uh, comic two-part episode opening. Uh, had a lot of fun with, especially with Tempest. She stole the show in terms of comedy. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's it's, what, it's one of those situations where, okay, uh, your comedic relief is not here at all. Like, what? Um, okay, maybe probably for one of the new characters, but there's, like, the main crew, uh, you have, who now? Um, you have... Uh, Rock Hoof, Tempest, Applejack, and also Sakura. And by, by looking at the four of them, none of them are comedic. So what do you do when you don't have any comedic characters? You get the straight man, or in this case, the straight pony, into a situation where she's doing the wrong... Not doing the wrong thing, but she's doing things that are bad. And... It's one of those cases where if you need to have a newspaper and you need to have a water bottle or a squirt bottle just to say, bad, bad tempers, bad. <laughs> I always love the, um, there's an explanation from a joke, uh, from a book called Only a Joke Can Save Us. And the author <laughs> puts, for, puts forth the idea that if you forge a connection between lack and excess in the same situation, the result is comedy. Uh, in this case, you have an excess of friendly and happy and bright and colorful ponies and other creatures. And then there's Tempest, who has a lack of enthusiasm in the same situation. And that conflict is what produces the humor. Yeah, and it was great. It was just great. Also, um, what else? Uh, the, 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 little, the little details that Andy put in the background, those are kind of awesome too. And funny enough, I'm just looking at the cover page right now, and I'm just noticing that he did the cover in 2019. Sorry, 2019. 2019. Yeah, that's true. 2019, yes. But then we get to the actual Faresian shore. Faresian shore, sorry. And I'm mixed about it then. Because, one, I really like the setting. I like how it's designed. I I like how they avoided uh, some pitfalls. Mm-hmm. But as we get to learn this this society, I start to see the template of Equestria imposed on a new background. And it loses a little bit of its appeal as a result. But at the same time, too, did it? Like, oh man, um, we're, we're probably we're going into spoilers when we talk about it. But, I mean, I, I get what you mean and whatnot. But at the same time, too, I... I It's hard not going to spoilers right now, so I'm going to hold my tongue, and I hope I can remember this. Oh, you will. We we shall get there. We will get to it. All right. And as for me, I enjoy the comic. Like, uh, I I haven't read it, so um, reading it today was kind of enjoyable. Like, I didn't really notice some of the nuance that uh, who now... Jeremy Whitley wanted to put in in terms of uh, things to notice like there's a scene where Zakura gets mad and she ain't rhyming yo and when Applejack's point that's out (laughs) uh, Zakura runs away (laughs) the rhyming is a lie (laughs) <laughs> yeah and oh man they they gave us a reason why so that is awesome <laughs> but still um the, the comic was fun the comic was fun I, I i love the introduction of the Phrygian um of, of Phrygia. I, i'm guessing it's Phrygia, but yeah uh it, it was a lot of fun i i, I do highly enjoy it <clears throat> but anywho those are my thoughts so um if you have not read this comic yet, pause here and go do so. Welcome back. We start off the comic with a panning shot of um, Equestria, or no, Cantalot. And it shows a banner saying, Twilight's first sunrise. And we we see a lot of callbacks. 
we see the hippie ponies, we see Andy Price favorite thing to put in, and we, we see a lot of cool stuff. Yes, the Watcher Pony. Yes. And then as we go on, we see that, oh, there's a lot of recognizable characters in Cantalot. Um, some are from the movies and some are, well, uh, from the show. Uh, some of that I can notice are like Fluttershy and uh, so C- Captain Solaris. C- 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 oh, oh. Me Se- name forget. Who, who's the name? I think it's Captain Celiano. Ah, yes. Celiano, C- yes. Uh, she's in the background with Fluttershy. Then we see Tempest, Capper, Trixie, Spitfire, and Discord. Then uh, we, we see... Applejack and a rock hoof, uh, hoof wrestling, and yeah, it seems that um, Rarity is losing money on this. <laughs> Rarity and Applejack just exchanging money. They have, I love Applejack's faith in her big brother. <laughs> yeah, but at the same time too, uh, Apple, uh, Big Mac is strong. Yep, even rock hoof. <laughs> Yeah, but anywho, uh, we we see a call, some callbacks like a Bon Bon showing of her in a wedding ring, engagement ring, and you have to ask how is she going to put that on? <laughs> Very carefully, and we see the pies are congratulating her and stuff. That's so awesomeness. So we do see that what uh Rainbow Dash just airlifted Zakura to Cantalot, and uh Zakura is. Not a fan of flying. So, yeah. Okay. Once everybody's in the castle, Twilight greets everyone and just says like, okay, thank you for coming on short notice because reasons, but I have a plan and I seek the help of the smartest pony I know in Equestria. Uh, Starbeard, Starbeard the Jerk is there. Uh, Sunburst and also... Wow, who was his name? <laughs> Stygian? Yes, thank you. Oh my god, it's been so long that I forgot names. <laughs> oh man, my brain. <laughs> okay, yeah, 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 yeah. <sighs> okay, so... Uh, Twilight shows the map of Equestria and says, Okay, this is the map of Equestria when I was in school. But then the Crystal Empire came in and then we... Uh, became friends with the yaks and then uh, so on so on so on so on so on so what Twilight is trying to say here is that because of all the good things that we've been doing and whatnot I've decided to send my friends to do some adventuring and expand our horizons and expand our friendship to other lands and whatnot I want to do it myself but no I have a schedule to keep and I have a book on princess things to do. <laughs> and if you notice, there's a post-it on the side that says, Yours now, sucker. <laughs> Boy. One last message from Celestia. <laughs> yeah, so I'm going to pause here because next up is going to be one of those scenarios where we have to carry over to something new. So, Silver, what do you think of the introduction? Oh, so it's a gathering of heroes and familiar faces. It's... Uh... One of the one of the advantages of the comic is that you don't have to pay for a voice acting cast. And so you can employ characters who haven't gotten a lot of screen time. I do find it interesting that Captain Celiano, you we recognize her by silhouette, but they make sure to highlight her jade peg leg, as that seems to be one of the more iconic aspects. And there's also uh, Discord cutting up photos of his ex-girlfriend. Oh, God, I didn't notice that. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I didn't notice that. Yeah? That, that, is, that is an Easter egg. Oh, there are tons of Easter eggs. There's Kappa wearing an I Hate Mondays. Although for a minute there, I thought it said I Hate Harmony. I was like, what? No. <laughs> yeah. Also, uh, what? Tempest just saying, didn't you just try to take over the kingdom? <laughs> and I'm trying to remember, wait, what, what is this a reference to? Is it season nine or is it the Chaos Arc? <laughs> I think it's the Chaos Arc. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, like, I, 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 I totally agree with you. Uh, since it, this is a comic, you don't really need to pay voice actors to, well, be in 
the comics. So that's awesome on multiple fronts. It's great just to see all these characters coming together, and you get a sense something big is about to happen. Very big is, mm-hmm. uh, g- gosh, how much would a vocal cast like this cost? Yeah, I mean, you've got the main six that's already, what, five to four, from five people. And then what, you got your returning guests, uh, John DeLancey, uh, oh man, I forgot her name, uh, Captain Serrano's actress. She's expensive because, well, she plays Gamora in Guardian of the Galaxy. Then, um, well, let's just say the budget would be dumb for a season 10 opener. But anywho, um, let's see. Okay, uh, the reason why is that... Did I mention the reason why? Not yet. Okay, so the reason why is uh, Twilight is going to create a group of badasses to expand their horizons and pull the other creatures from their lands into, well, uh, the Equestria... How do I put this? The, the Equestria Unity thingy. Stuff. I'm just making things up. But uh, it's just a plan where um, you Twilight is just going to expand her horizons and spread friendship. Yes. So we got Rainbow Dash leading the awesome crew of Captain Solano, Spitfire, Lyra Heartstring, and Sweetie Bon Bon Drops. And I, I do like the quote-unquote... Um, Subtitles for them because Rainbow Dash, Speedster, Wonderball, Loyal, uh, Captain Solano, Pirate, sorry, Pirate Parrot, pi- uh, wow, wow. <laughs> that's a tongue twister, Pirate Parrot Pilot. Oh my god. <laughs> um, and then Spitfire is Vin Diesel. Um, Heartstrings is Musician, Secret Agent. Bonbon bon is Monster Hunter and Secret Agent. So um, those two are quote unquote uh, canon from the novels. Yep, smile. Agents of smile. Yeah. So that's awesome. Then we got what? Uh, Pinkie Pie and Fluttershy having her crew. And she's with Kepper, Discord, and Trixie. Odd choice having Trixie on. Uh, then you got Rarity, Big Mac. Mod and Mitch Meadowbrooks. Okay, another odd choice. Then uh, we got Applejack. So her crew is uh, herself, Tempest Shadow, Rockhoof, and also Zakura. And at this point, you see that, okay, Zakura says, Had you told me where we were go? Sorry, um, had you told me where we were go, then I would have answered no. And she's gone. Like, she is out of it. And at this point here, uh, I'm just going to summarize because, well, it's heavy. Applejack says, yo, Sakura, wait up. What's up? What's up? I thought you'd be happy to go back to your home uh, home country or whatever it is. I mean, it's been a while since you... Le- <laughs> uh, it's been a while since you returned home. And Sakura says, like, you don't know the reason why I left and whatnot. And if you like I could have been banished, I could have been running for my life and whatnot. You you got no idea. And to sprung this on me, blah blah blah. And at first Applejack is angry, then understanding and then is sorry. And then she explained her reason why and they stopped fighting. And they just, and Zakura just says, okay, like, I'll help you on your quest, but if I don't feel like it, I'll just, um, won't go, or I'll just stay on the ship and whatnot. And th- that's about it. And uh, Applejack start rhyming too, and then, uh, Zakura just, Zakura's the one that pointed it out. And Applejack says, hey, hey uh, wait. Wait, when were you when you were yelling at me? None of that rhymed. <laughs> and they're like, "Oh, run away, run away!" And I, I have to point something out: the coloring over on one of the pages is really interesting. And I'm just wondering: is it because it's a stylish, uh, what you call this, uh, a stylish choice, or was it a mix-up? 
What do you think, Silva? I think it's a stylish choice. Uh, I'm not sure why, but it's definitely a different style. Andy Price did away with the line art and instead relied on very heavy contrast to define the characters. So the black of the floor and uh, the banner, the desk, they all stand in contrast of Applejack's coat and Zakura's. And I think it helps distinguish them as the panels overlap. I guess so. I mean, yeah, I guess so. It's very stylish. In, yeah, I mean, it's very stylish. It's not the norm. I, I think this is the first time I seen something like this. Well, it's always good to mix things up. Also, uh, the reason I say that it's likely a choice, notice how the f- the frame below that image, the border traces Applejack and Sakura's hooves. Yeah, I, I noticed that. And like, I was just wondering, like, is it because... Uh, Andy Price messed up and then Heidebrecker had to do something or I mean there's there's a lot of reasons but uh, style uh, I mean, in terms of style yes it's stylish but is it the right choice here? Uh, you know what I, I'll say it's a yes because when you take a look at the background with the uh, bunting uh, the window the floral stuff it's it looks very uh, deliberate Anywho, continuing on, unless you want to comment on something? Well, this, actually, this moment is probably what made or break the story for a lot of people. We Mm -hmm. haven't seen uh, Zakura move to this level of anger, ever. Even when Twilight broke, or what was it, Rainbow and Applejack came in and started busting up her home, and Twilight accused her of being an evil enchantress who cooks foals. (laughs) Uh, They, so, a lot of people just couldn't wrap their heads around why is Sakura reeing this hard? <laughs> but and, she did explain. That's the thing. Like, she did oh, explain why. Well, that... But in season... But in uh, issue two and onwards. Hmm. Up until now, the, she's listing hypotheticals, none of which actually came true. She was never banished. She's never in fear for her life, so on and so forth. She's just pointing out how Applejack didn't think this through. Now, I also want to defend Applejack a little in all this. There was an issue zero leading up to this, in which Twilight... Wait, what? Yeah, there was an issue zero. Oh, God, is this one of those comic book days? Yes. Oh, man, I miss it. Well, not to worry. Uh, it didn't really feature anything. Twilight was missing in action as her first sunrise uh, approached, and everyone was panicking. They thought, oh, God, the princess has been kidnapped, and it isn't even her first day yet. <laughs> Okay, Wait. yeah, this sounds normal. Yeah, that's a, that's a pop for the course of Equestria. It turns out Twilight was just had just fallen asleep in the library as she was thinking <laughs> about her, what her reign signified. And as a result, uh, Spike had a talk with her, and Twilight realized what she had to do, which also included relying on her friends. That's where she got the idea for this, and that's when she started calling all the heroes together. As such, Applejack has had all of a morning to prepare this idea. Mm. Basically, maybe just an hour or two to to think of a team and have Rainbow go out and abduct them. <laughs> I mean, let's call let's call it what it is—abduction <laughs> or recruiting. That's still good. So Applejack went with a very big assumption that Sakura wanted to go home. At the same time, she wasn't given a lot of time to think about and second guess or or reflect on her decisions. So nobody is getting a fair shake here. Zakura is being dragged into something she didn't agree to. Applejack Mm -hmm. made a decision, but she wasn't given time to reflect on it or to approach Zakura in private. It's a bit of a mess for all involved. But... When, when this was first coming out and people were like, why is the crowd acting like this? I don't like this story. My thought was something really major happened, something that makes her more upset than everything else she's encountered up until now. She's been stern, she's been mad, but she's never been furious in the show. I would be worried, however, if she were incapable of fury because when you say a, a character can't get mad, then they're no longer a a real character. They're something else. You've removed uh, a part that can make them whole. Everybody has a breaking point. Everybody has a moment of pure rage. 
it depends on what you the stress you put them under and uh and, and the environment and the timing but even the most patient soul has an angry side and believe you do not want to test uh the limits on that it's a fool's errand yeah that, that is true and over here with like okay uh, uh granted like you mentioned before like uh, I'm, I'm just repeating myself but uh zakura was dragged into this that she didn't want applejack drag i mean is you like you mentioned before i i totally agree on that and it's one of those things where Zakura just mentions, uh, I think I may be jumping off for a bit, but Zakura, Zakura just mentions that she doesn't really share her personal life at all with anyone. Uh, only People only know her as the potion maker and she sells her goods in the Ponyville market to survive and whatnot. So besides that, there's nothing really going on or there's nothing really get, that we know about her. And that's the thing that I think a lot of people uh, are kind of frustrated and disappointed at because uh, this is a, as a whole, in, in generally as a whole, that we want to know what's going on with Sakura. We, we want to know her world, her backstories and whatnot. But what we got was not what we wanted. And that is frustrating to a point. But for me, I kind of enjoy this comic. But but that's my point. Anything you want to add, Slava? Not for right now. Alrighty then. <clears throat> so, anywho, let's go back to the, well, comics. Uh, so, in the next hour or so, I'm just guessing, uh, we go to the docks and we see that um, the pirate pony, he's there. Yay, callback. Woo! <laughs> so, uh, wait, did the pirate pony lose his hoof? Of yeah, real hoof? I, I forgot. He, yeah, he's, I think he always had a peg leg. Uh, okay. His girlfriend is probably under the sea at the bottom of the paddle there. Yeah. Oh, man, that's a good one. But anywho, uh, let's see. Um, The ponies send their, uh, well, Rainbow Dash, Big Mac, and Apple Bloom send uh, Applejack off. And we see that Cranky has a boat. What? Yeah, he was, a, he was an adventurer. So he, but, he may have mothballed the ship, and now it's uh, back in service. But, but I, I am just shocked. Like, okay, um, th this is a galleon. Like, this is one of those pirate ships and whatnot. Like, Cranky has it. What? <laughs> oh man! But okay, um, uh, they bid their farewells. Apple Bloom saying that, oh, I, I want some souvenirs. I want to uh, make people jelly and whatnot. And Tempest and Rocco says, are you coming or not? Because we could do this on our own. <laughs> so as they got on the ship, they are greeted by... Uh, well, I I'm just going to re read this. Uh, <clears throat> uh, Cranky is pissed off at Applejack because um, saying that... What? Tempest is a donkey and uh, Cranky takes offense to that, but uh, Applejack apologizes and says that uh, he she didn't mean it that way because well Tempus is stubborn. And then well, uh, Cranky just says, "Well, then I'll grant you." Uh, well, that I grant you, Ragamuffin. And when I read that, I was like, "Wait, what? <laughs> Cranky is calling Applejack Ragamuffin? <laughs> um, wait, what?" <laughs> And then on the next panel, we we see a pony. Um, uh, one of the second in ha uh, second in charge is called um Ragamuffin. <laughs> so I I thought like <laughs> I, I thought Cranky was hitting on Applejack. Oh God! <laughs> yeah, he's a buried man. How dare! How dare! I know. I know. But that's the thing. Um, Applejack, did did you just call me Ragamuffin? <laughs> oh, boys. <clears throat> And um, is Rick Muffin any, what you call this, a uh, reference to anybody? Yes, he's a reference to the Equestria Girls uh, special, where they're on where they're on a cruise ship. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, now I remember. And yeah, I remember Rick Muffin having one of the silly accents. Okay, okay, cool, 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 cool. 
and he's basically a male Applejack, which uh, Rarity's attraction <laughs> to him spoke volumes. Oh, I know, but um, his accent, um, not Cockney, was it? Well, it was some sort of British impersonation, but it was definitely not country. Yeah, but in Equestria, I, I think that's his talking style. <laughs> Uh, apparently he's ad- he's ad- ad- adopted it or he's keeping up the pretense maybe mm, he's probably. a secret agent too <laughs> yes but anywho uh they set off sail and a rock hoof just noticed something or just realized something what is this uh it only just occurred to me that much of this journey will be on a boat what use is a shovel in ocean <laughs> And he just screams in frustration. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, it, it's one of those things where things like this I enjoy because the realization of, wait, I am a muscle-bound pony that is popular with a shovel. What am I going to do with a shovel in the ocean? <laughs> so they set off sail and Applejack writes some uh, letter to Apple Bloom. Uh, detailing stuff like uh, there was a storm going on and uh, Tempest went onto the deck to fight the storm and she won. How does that even process? Like, oh god, no. Then on what, day five was it? Oh no, on day three, uh, they were uh, Diamond Dog Pirates. But that didn't... Uh, well, it didn't pan well for them because uh, Cranky had a secret crewmate, and that's Steven. Yay! Steven is part of the crew somehow. <laughs> that's cool. <clears throat> and then uh, on day five, there were narwhals, angry narwhals. And somehow Rockhoof did something. Then well, on the... Sorry? It, it turns out he... Even despite his misgivings, he really did bail on the crew. Hi oh, <laughs> I missed that. I missed that. <laughs> <clears throat> so anyway, uh, on the seventh day, they arrived in uh, the Phrygian shores, and when when Applejack comes out to deck, it's beautiful. It's awesome. And Sakura is shaking in her boots. Uh, Applejack says, take your time, but you should know Twilight has arranged some ponies from your town to meet us. So that gave Sakura a bit of a panic. Hmm, that's not good. So as they set ashore and, what you call this, uh, walk through town, Tempest gave Sakura some pep talk about Oh, um, how I, I understand how we feel about this because I was in the same boat as you until I met my friend and then we are close friends right now and so on. And then uh, before Zakura could really respond, we see that she's greeted by her old friend. And I I was just a bit surprised by the phrase, is that old sunshine flanks? And... When we are greeted to um, Zakura's childhood friend, uh, what was her name again? Uh, Marini. And oh my god, <laughs> when I first saw this, like, wait, what? W- what? <laughs> what am I even watching here? <sighs> and I think I should take a break here. So, Zil, what do you think? All right. Well, uh, doubling back to when they're saying goodbye to Big Mac and Apple Bloom, Zakura, the way the spelling in her word bubble, it is far Asian. Far Far Asian? Yeah. Oh, yes. There we go. So it is the far Asian coast. They mix up there. But uh, one, Applejack cannot stop putting her hoof in her mouth. She offends Mm. Zakura. She offends Cranky. It's like, okay, AJ, you're... You're really making it hard for me to, to stand up for you here. Come on, work with me. But Silver is an episode that stars Applejack, and you know what that means. <laughs> Lots of apples? No, it's for Applejack to be dumb. Ah. 
She's usually even keel, pun intended. Now, I do love Tempest shouting into a storm. This is a reference to Forrest Gump. <laughs> is when that Lute- all you got? Exactly. You call this a storm, Lieutenant Dan? No. And, <laughs> and funny enough, the Diamond Dog, hmm. you notice that his coat is blue. Mm-hmm. Which is very different from uh, the Diamond Dog's. I don't know if this was intentional or not, but it's kind of a bridge to what we'll see later on. Oh, okay. But from what I see, uh, let's see. Oh, yes. Uh, it's just Applejack stating that uh, not the normal pony pirates. So, yeah, just, just stating that these are uh, salty dogs, like salty ship. Well, you know what I mean. Like, they're diamond dogs. So, yeah, there's, there's something rare. Like, but I do find it fascinating because we get to see... The dining room dogs back again doing other things other than being on the ground. So that says a lot. Yes, and Team Rarity will be going to the Diamond Dogs Kingdom. Really now? Yes. That's what they set okay. up. Okay. And so uh and then okay, jumping to the far far Asian coast itself. Mm. I was very relieved because I wasn't sure how they were going to present this. Zakura's home has always had a very <coughs> tribal feel. The masks on the wall, uh, a cauldron. I, at the risk of using the wrong word, primitive seemed, mm-hmm. seemed to be a theme. But you look at the Far Asian coast, that building on the left uh, is an actual building in, it's one of the archeo- uh, architectural wonders of the world. Let's see here. While you go take a look, see at that, I'll, I'll give my opinion on uh, the Florian Shores. Uh, when, when I first saw this, uh, one thing came up to my mind and saw that, oh my God, that looks awesome. Could this be Wakanda? <laughs> well, okay, that it's a bit weird because Wakanda is meant to be hidden. See, it's like advanced where you expect is the proper term third world, which always sounds like an insult. So basically I, I just really enjoy seeing that. I enjoy seeing this modern take on everything. Which is kind of great. Like uh, it's a risk expectation. So that's awesome. Like I, w- I was thinking like, okay, maybe um, <laughs> one of those cases, like you mentioned before, uh, how is Akura? Akura, looks uh like okay she's primitive okay uh then let's move on a bit and then we see her friend and then uh, a lot of things came through my mind okay uh maybe zakura is just a very old-fashioned person um sticking to the ideals and traditions and whatnot then we see her friends but uh, that's too far ahead let's pause here and uh, continue on with what you wanted to say I think you were looking up the name of the building? Yes, it's the 15 Alice Lane Towers in Johannesburg, South Africa. Ah. It's a building that's coloring and... uh, Well, basically, its appearance changes in relation to the sun. Oh, that's cool. But too bad in this comic, uh, it's brown. (laughs) Well, that's just where the sun was. (laughs) Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. But it was a a marvelous addition, and it kind of drove home that this is not Equestria going into the wild to meet uh, the uncultured or the the primitive. No, they're connecting with peers. I think that's very important. Granted, with Grokov's greeting, you're going to break your peers' spines. (laughs) Yep. And, well, before we hit there, let's continue on, because um, Mirari, Mirari? Uh, Ma- Ma- Marini, yes, Marini. What, what do you think? Like, first appearance and whatnot. Well, she was sort of redefining the zebra. I mean, Sakura, gray with, with gr- darker gray stripes. I mean, pretty uh, close to the zebra image we have here in our world. Mm-hmm. Now, Marini just throws all that out the window. I mean, uh, the, the question marks in her mane, the swirls in her stripes... It's sort of signaling, hey, we're gonna be we're gonna be redefining the look quite a bit. But because she keeps the shape of the zebra very similar to Zakura, I don't mind because I think uh it's asking you 
to accept a new evolution of the look, but it still keeps ties to the old. Again, I, I, I keep bringing up the Diamond Dogs because visual aesthetic is going to be a huge part of that issue. It's a question of how far can you ask the reader to accept a new status quo? And for this, I, I was shocked. I, I grant you that I was shocked. And the first thing that came into my mind is like, wait, what? Oh, man. Uh, is, is this one of those, like I mentioned before, uh, Sakura was being traditionalist and whatnot, and uh, Marini was being one of those modern age kind of ponies. And when you look at her speech pattern, oh, she wasn't, uh, she she's not rhyming or rapping and stuff like oh uh is is that a tradition and whatnot and uh, <laughs> uh well we get an explanation later so i'm gonna carry on if you don't mind sure thing all right so uh marini comes uh uh asks azokura oh it's been a long time since i seen you kid how about a hug for old time's sake and uh zakura just says no, I'm run away, run away. And uh, I do like this channel with, a, what you call this, Tempest here. And she says, listen, I'm a pro at shutting down hugs. And that was next level. <laughs> but like you mentioned before, um, while Marini gets shut down by Zakura, Rocco here doesn't mind a hug. So with with that, um, <coughs> Rockhoof introduces himself, and Marini says, "Wait, wait, wait, wait! You're Rockhoof? Do you Rockhoof?" And uh, Rockhoof starts explaining, like, "Oh yeah, uh, I was trapped for a thousand years because of this and that, and so on." And as they walk around town, uh, showing uh, stuff. Uh, like what Marini is being their tour guide and whatnot, and yeah, they they, they explain certain things like how uh, the dock they were in is <clears throat> part of the Ka Casa. Oh God, it's Casa Branco. Uh, <laughs> I love this comic. Ah! <laughs> oh man. Okay, so uh, part of Casa Branco, which is. Uh, the bigger city, but our town is Z Z something like Zipra, so on. So it explains a bit of how uh, the Phrygian shore works. Okay, there's a lot of backstories about how the Phrygian shore works. So I'm just going to let you uh, guys at home read and uh, decide how to. And I I I just enjoy the conversation that uh, what you call this. Tempest is having with Applejack saying, in my experience, most royalty is disappointing. For for a while, there I was turning a prince or princess to stone once a week. <laughs> and then, uh, you know, Applejack just says, you don't plan on turning this one to stone, do you? Not unless it gets on my nerve. So about a 50-50% chance. <laughs> so, um, after that, hilarious conversation by Applejack and Tempest, we see Mar Marini's friends, or her welcome wagon, all of Zakura's childhood friends. Um, wow, this is going to be one of those... Okay, I'm going to cut it short. So anyway, we are greeted with Devil Dust, Catis Rose, Medley Brook, and Crystal. And cl clearly, Zakura is cringing like she is not comfortable with this scenario here at all and before i carry on two of the ponies uh, they, they are called ponies by the way two of the ponies are kelpie and the other two were what was it again silver oh let's see here it's actually stated in the next issue with the, the species ah yes yeah. so you know what let's just wait for the next issue then so with Zakura meeting her old friends, she runs away! Run away! And with that, uh, issue 89 is over. But since we're doing a review, let's continue on. <clears throat> oh, uh, before I carry on, um, have, do you have anything to add, Silver? Well, my surprise, uh, 
also, I, I looked a little ahead in the next issue. The species is called an abada. Abada? Um, is that a reference to anything you know? That is an actual creature in uh, African lore, mythology. Oh. Some think it was inspired by the rhino, as they have two horns on their snout. But, let's see here. Abada, I believe, are usually seen as a positive thing. They are... In essence, an African unicorn. Mm-hmm. I'm looking at one picture here, and uh, it could be that the uh, what there, there there's a misunderstanding that it could be a rhino, but not who knows. But yeah, uh, I'm looking at one picture here. It does look like a what you call this unicorn with longer horns. Hmm. And it said that their horns can act as an antidote to poison. Now, that doesn't really come into play in this story, but if if ever someone wanted to expand, <clears throat> there you go. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But uh, the funny thing is that while the Abada are, na- are native to Africa, or you know, part of the African mythology, Kelpies, as far as I know, are a Celtic mythology in, uh, yeah. I believe, is it Ireland or Scotland? Mad Munchkin will, I think... will get mad if I mix them up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I think Mehdi once said it before and so on. So, yeah, this is fascinating. Why are they here? <laughs> uh, Scottish. Yeah, Scotland. Scottish. Yeah. So, uh, anything more to add, Silver? Kelpies like to drown you. Yeah, don't I remember swi- that. Don't go swimming with them. <laughs> yeah. So, okay, Um, I'm going to carry on, if you don't mind. Yes, please. Yes, please. So, okay, uh, no first impressions because this is continuing on from the previous thing. So, anyway, uh, we continue issue 90, episode 2, <laughs> uh, with a backstory of Zakura and her pals. So, I am going to quote-unquote fast-forward on this. So, Zakura just tells a story about when she was young, uh, she was kind of a nerd. <laughs> uh, she was reading books and whatnot, and suddenly... A ball hit her on the head. She meets up with uh, some friends and she became good friends with them. And they, well, kind of played and stuff. Like, they were uh, awesome. They were awesome kids. Then uh, in school, she learned about, well, the differences between Abada and Kelpie and whatnot. And uh, like what? Uh, Abadas have the ability to commune with nature or have superpowers and whatnot. Uh, Kelpie have the power to manipulate water and so on. And then when she goes on to the, whatchamacallit, uh, zebras, they don't have stuff. Like, they don't have magical powers, no nothing, nothing at all. Nothing at all. Nothing at all. And Zakura just asks, like, is there no way a zebra can learn to use magic? Like, if, if they're... Uh, really try really, really hard. Uh, the teacher says no. And then she shows a book about unicorns slash alicorns. And uh, the, what she says is the only creatures who are rumored to be able to learn magic are unicorns. And according to legends, they only exist in a far off dark monster cover land of Equestria. They may just be a myth. So that is fascinating on that end there. Like, why would ponies outside of Equestria think that? I honestly think it's pretty accurate. Monster-covered land, yeah, they've run into their fair share. Dark? Well, I guess it depends on your definition of dark. Well, it depends on where you start looking. And when you think about it, uh, the Farisian Shores is far off where you quote unquote need to take a week which is not that far uh of boat travel to be there and if i'm not mistaken uh, i'm not sure sure where the map is but if you go through the south you need to head to clock town clock clock what was that town again clock town yeah clock town and that is not a friendly place so everything she said is technically accurate, but like all myths, they're, they're, it's not the whole picture. Yeah, that's it. This is probably the worst teacher ever. <laughs> at least in the show. Yeah, but at least she has a nice afro. Gotta give her okay. that. 
Well, okay. I'll actually, I'll, I'll, I'll cut her some slack. She's as bad as the teacher, the flight instructors that laughed at Fluttershy or, and Rainbow Dash. Uh, <laughs> aside from Cheerilee, I'm not sure teachers come off too well in this series. Uh, well, if you're talking about teacher, the Celestia. <laughs> well, she has a very different style. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But when, when you're directly in charge of class... This teacher is basically is telling the other kids, you're never going to be special. You're, <laughs> you're, you're automatically less than your peer. I mean, yeah. wow, lady, wow. Yeah, that, that sucks. But anywho, uh, with that statement there, Zakura says, you know what? Screw you, I'm going to learn magic. And she poured all of her... Uh, time and effort into doing so. Uh, by doing so, she ostracized her friends. And with that, uh, well, everybody kind of uh, just, well, uh, gone, gone distance. But she did have some interactions with them. Uh, what? Devil Dust? Uh, she showed a picture of Mage Meadowbrook, who was a pony who could uh, well not conjure but uh, do magic with potions and when she showed uh, what devil does uh, who meadow was and he just questions what uh, wait what's an earth pony that is one of those things where wait what how how off how like wait what that is just fascinating on that point. But anywho, um, <clears throat> she gone mad and storms off in the flashback. Uh, coming back to reality, we see Applejack comforting Sakura because, well, she's retelling the story and whatnot, and they caught up to the present. So, yeah, Applejack just says, uh, thank you for sharing that with me. I know it's very hard, but uh, why, uh, they're your friends and whatnot, so why not give them another chance? Applejack says, yeah, I'm sorry for that. The princess sent us for a reason, so let's check it out. And when they come back, they they see that uh, Rockhoof was digging a hole and water came out. So that's awesome. And at the same time, Tempest here is digging info on, uh, well, Kelpies and whatnot. <laughs> and <laughs> Applejack says, Tempest, stop that. <laughs> and Tempest just says, I could conquer and subjugate this place in an hour. Half an hour if I had help. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, Tempest, you're bad. Uh, Applejack just whispers, "We're not here to conquer anyone. This, this is a peaceful mission." And Tempest just says, "Yeah, but say it wasn't, and we need it." To- <laughs> oh, boys! <clears throat> so, anywho, uh, Marini comes back to uh, what you call this, Sakura, saying, "Welcome back," and they just caught up and. Marini just says, guess what? I'm the mayor of the town. And so I'm going to show you around. So all their friends go walking around and they see their, uh, well, their old house, like Sakura's old home. Uh, the parents are not there anymore. I, I think they move on to the capital, but the house there. And they get into a little tussle between Sakura and Marini saying that how she just abandoned the friends and whatnot. And they just squabble because they, like, the bad feelings are there. Uh, I'm just going to pause here. So, Silver, what do you think? Well, let's see here. First off, I have to make a small correction. It's Dust Devil. Dust Devil. Okay, my bad. That's just a small thing. I One, I feel kind of bad for Sakura with the teams. She was a fangirl of Mage Meadowbrook. She could have gone on a mission with her senpai. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And spent the whole time going, Notice me! Witness me! Come on! But at the same time, too, um, 
going back to the team selection, it is all over the place and it's unbalanced. It's like playing Overwatch with four DPSs. Yeah, that's usually how people won. Yep. <laughs> oh boys. No, but uh when you when you take a look see at uh what? Rainbow Dash's team, she has three flyers and two of ponies. No magics. Uh, she's got uh, secret rarities. agents though. Hmm? Sorry? She's got secret agents though. Yeah, but still, like it's un- really unbalanced. Uh, for F- a rarity team, you had one unicorn and three earth ponies. Am I right? If I'm not mistaken, that was the first panel, right? Mm-hmm. Well, it was so, the last yeah. issue, but yeah, sorry. So yeah, it's one of those things where team composition is all over the place and it's whack. And yeah, for Fluttershy's team, what? One flyer, well, two flyers if you can count Discord, one unicorn, and two ground based uh, characters. So it's one of those things where mm, it's very, I find this very interesting. And by the way, Silver, um, as the book continues on, uh, are we having one of those scenarios where uh, things continue on, or it's like, oh, this week this happens, and then the next week then something else happens? But we don't see the adventure some, sometimes something. How is it? Oh, well, I won't, don't want to give a lot of weight. There, there are at least two issues devoted to each team, with the annual going to rare, Team Rarity, which is a double size issue. I got to say, this mission, this introduction to the, to the idea of these foreign uh, missions, it's the one that gets the most time in expansion. So I, it, at the risk of sounding pessimistic, I believe this is the high point right here. Oh, really? No. Like, this is the high point? Yes, this introduction to an entirely different uh, group, expanding the role of Zakura. And uh, I just say, I love Zakura's backstory in this. Yeah, totally. Like, it shows her, <laughs> it shows her being a nerd. a nerd. Well, here's the thing. For a long time, fans have been looking to Sakura to be the, the baseline of zebra culture. Does everyone talk in rhymes like that? Is is she a normal zebra? Well, a normal person wouldn't go to a whole foreign land, set up in a dangerous forest, and uh, live the life of a hermit. It turns out Sakura's not quite in either world. She's born to the zebra world, but is attracted to the pony culture. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, isn't fully accepted by the pony culture because of that. Well, she's from the unknown. They they do a really bad job of welcoming her. But at the same time, too, when you take a look see at Zakura and take a look see at uh, Farisia, it's one of those cases where I personally thought at first uh, Zakura was a traditionalist and whatnot. But at the same time, too. Uh, no, she's just strange. And when you think about it, when you really think about it, she set up shop in the Everfree Forest, had a home in a tree. And who else do you know that's not Twilight that lives in a tree? Uh, her senpai. Yeah. So she's emulating her. Uh, at first, we didn't know that. But once we get that fact, like, oh, wow, okay, um... There's something wrong with you then. <laughs> I, I just find it fascinating with that fact there. Like, oh, the only reason why uh, Zakura is this way is because she's emulating uh, Meadowbrooks. Yep, even the rhyming. And then we also, we haven't gotten to Marini's side of the story yet. Mm-hmm. Wait, by the way, uh, did Meadowbrooks rhyme? Well, Meadowbrook did not, but her, she was more of the potion path. Maybe other... Yeah. Maybe other unicorns did the rhyming thing. Uh, but, okay, I, I forgot to mention in one of the explanations in the, uh, what you call this, flashback, uh, the only reason why Zakura's rhyming is because it helps with potion making and whatnot. And I'm just thinking, Metabooks didn't rhyme. Well, maybe she re- went out of that phase. Oh, Probably. she had been a, maybe she went through a goth poet phase. She and Starlight should compare notes. <laughs> Probably. But, um, uh, let's see. Uh, anything more to add before I continue on? 
Not at the moment. No. Well, okay, maybe just one thing. Uh, apparently, Kelpies, we learned from Marini talking to Applejack, uh, they explode if they eat a zap apple. And Brooke Melody, she's apparently shorter now because she got pieced back together. Ah, uh, yes, yes, yes. Like, yeah, uh, they mentioned that because of the electric, uh, she exploded. So there's a, there's another bit in the arsenal for Tempest. She could conquer this place with apples. <laughs> yes, yes. So, anywho, I'm going to carry on. <clears throat> so, as they argue, Marini uh, tells her side of the story. Uh, still the same thing, but I'm just going to summarize. Uh, Marini sees uh, what? Zakura and invites her to be a friend with them, and they do. But because of that whole incident with the magic thing, she kind of uh, ex- uh, ostracized herself from the group just to learn magic and whatnot. And she is, um, well, Sakura is not being understanding because Marini here sees and tries to support Sakura, but uh, she knows about reality and whatnot. And tries to let it down easy for Sakura, saying that you shouldn't really have your hopes high up because what happens if you don't manage to do it? I mean, that's going to be another disappointment. I don't want you to face that. But at the same time, too, Sakura thinks that, oh, you're not supporting me. Ah, me mad. Rah, 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 rah. And when Sakura hears about this, she kind of, well, feels... Uh, let's just say that they have a lot to go through. Like, a lot. And the whole group kind of talks to... Well, uh, they have an intervention, like for lack like for a better word. Saying that, Zakura, you just keep talking about magic all the time. I mean... At first it was cute, but then it got really annoying, and then you kept showing us those magic cards. Like, couldn't you just stop it? <laughs> so, as they keep on talking and whatnot, we see that Zakura is a bit pissed off because, uh, because of what uh, I, like I, I keep talking about magic and whatnot. You, you guys bullied me and stuff, and the only one doing the bullies was Crystal. Because when Sakura was stepping on a puddle, she turned the puddle into ice and made her slip and fall. And Crystal got reprimanded for that. And as they kept arguing, uh, there's a rumble on the ground, or there's a rumble. And they start into action because it seems that a monster is coming to town. And Sakura's tries to help but Marini just says no you're getting in the way step out of the way and we are greeted to a oh my god what well, did uh Groot Slag yes it is um a worm snake creature thingy ooh very scary I am going to pause no no you know what no I'm gonna continue around because uh this is the best part. <clears throat> so the monster appears and the crew, well, the uh, Frisian crew do their job. Zakura wants to help, but uh, it seems that she's just getting in the way because there's no synergy between her and her f- old friends. But Applejack says, well, uh, if you want to help, you can always count on your, well, Ponyville friends. So, uh... Everybody helps Zakura with potion making and somehow she managed to create a firebomb? Something like that? Give or take? And the monster uh, jumps away, scaring it and stuff. Uh, All her friends take a look and says, Wow, that's amazing! You can do magic! Woohoo! And while the old friends congratulate uh, Zakura on a job well done, uh, it seems that 
the monster somehow climbs up on a school, uh, getting ready to attack Marini and the school kids. But before that could happen, <clears throat> uh, the prince appears. Prince Abrax. Abrax. I think that's how you say it. So, Prince Abrax appears and do a flashbang to scare the monster away. So, the prince is there and, well, uh, he asks who was the pony that helped scare away the monster and whatnot. And uh, Zakura introduced herself and, uh, how do I put this? Uh, the prince knows who Zakura is and that's really awesome. And I'm going to pause here. So, Silver, what did you think? Well, let's see here. First off, we got the two sides to every story, and uh, everyone's painting themselves as the as the victim in this conflict. Uh, Zakura, you abandoned us. No, you abandoned me. Every somebody abandoned someone. Oh, Crystal, you're a jerk. So it's a very rounded conflict. Although we don't really get to know why Crystal was so cruel. She says they had a good thing going, and Zakura ruined it. But what has made Crystal so angry? To just about everyone, it seems. And, Bye. well, she doesn't really get repri- reprimanded, I think. She's just sort of... Crystal, you never told us you did that. Meh. Now, the Groot Slang. I'm a big fan of the Groot Slang because it, too, is an African myth. And this thing mm. is malice personified. Oh, really? Basically, the idea is that at the dawn of creation, when the gods were new to this whole making life thing... They goofed bad. <laughs> they, they created something that was uh, too smart, too malevolent, too powerful. And thus, all the Groot slang were split into an, the elephant and the snake. Oh, okay. Except for one. It was clever enough to evade the gods and has continued to do so, living underwater in massive... Uh, in massive... Uh, caves and the thing is this Groot slang design is doesn't have much by way of elephant elements it's more dragonic you know oh, snake, there's also serpentish. a dragon yeah. serpent but uh one cryptozoologist pointed out compare like the frills on this Groot slang and think of an elephant's ears i i can see that some theorize that the whole elephant uh, snake comparison was just trying to convey a sense of frills. Uh, some of you might, th- if we're if going with the most pop culture reference, think of the spitting dinosaur in the first Jurassic Park. Uh-huh. Dilophosaur? Mm-hmm. Like that's right. But either way, that's what they're proposing. So the Groot slang, it's a great opponent in the sense that it it's hatred and malice personified it loves to torture its victims it it loves cruelty it's something unnatural in the purest sense which is what a monster is supposed to be something that defies nature itself something that should not be oh you mean like the platypus well that's just nature having a laugh (laughs) but it's with the introduction of king abraxas that the similarities start to become a little too apparent. There are four princes. King of Braxis mm-hmm. is obviously th- sun themed, even with a crown reminiscent of Celestia. I like his, the I like his necklace and uh, there's a there's a more proper term for what he's wearing. It's not a skirt. It is let's see here. But basically I believe it's it might be called the sarong. Oh sarong. Oh, sorry, yeah. Maybe. But anyway, the thing is we're starting to see, oh, there are three races. Uh, the Abada, the Kelpie, and the Zebra. There are four princes, presumably sun, moon, friendship, and love. Probably. And next issue really drives home that now the, the we're copying Friendship is Magic's premiere so closely that it's starting to blur between homage and and ripoff. Mm. But when you take a look, see at okay, uh, 
Prince Abaxresia. It's like he is a, a zebra that, well, somehow have powers unless he learns the flash move from Dragon Ball. Solar Flare. Yeah, or, or unless he's just really, really shiny. Well, I'm assuming that's a power bestowed on whomever assumes the role of prince. Which makes you wonder, why, why didn't Sakura seek that out? Well, Sakura's never struck me as a leader in that sense. She's mm-hmm. a great advisor, but I don't think she'd want to be in charge. I, I'm just thinking like, okay, the prince of your land has quote-unquote powers. Why did the Afro teacher didn't state that when Sakura just asked? Because... <laughs> Uh, you you get what I mean, right? It's like, what the hell is wrong with you? Because yeah, building kids' confidence is not her goal. Hence, bad teacher. Yeah, unless that is not a po- zebra. But no, it is a zebra. It's it's not a it's not a what abrex. It's not a uh kelpie. It's it looks like a zebra. So what's going on here? And that teacher's dumb. Yep. Okay, I, I need to double check. Like, Silver, does the prince look like a zebra or a, a, a brack, was it? Oh, no, he's very much a zebra. Yeah, so... <laughs> oh, so, teacher's dumb. I'm going to continue on. Prince notices little Sakura and says, Ah, it seems that you learn magic from Equestria. And the power of the unicorns. And Sakura just says, Nah, not really, because I don't have a horn, so I can't channel magic that way. So, what I did was learn potion making so it's a bit cumbersome because i need to do the potions and whatnot but still uh it's kind of works magic in a bottle yay i can sell that so uh, applejack goes up to the prince saying that yo prince we want to help is there any way we can do me and my crew here we we we, we love to help the prince says like sure and but with the current situation i don't know how because well, I need to chase down the Abrax. Because, sorry, I need to chase down the Groot Slag because it's going to attack another town. So I have to go there. So yeah, um, I'm not sure. Maybe you could cross the desert and whatnot. But for for outsiders, that's going to be very difficult. And uh, Mirari just says, "Now they don't have to go alone. We can help them." Yay! And books to be continued and looking at the time i think we should well wrap things up here too yes we've been going for about an hour and a half yeah on recording but we got no idea about editing but still uh this is one of those things where this comic is very fascinating so um i know we have still two more issues to go but we're going to pause here And, well, make it a two-parter. So the second part, or, well, part three and four will be handled next week. So um, I'm just going to, uh, you know, not really ask for final thoughts, but just say that if you want to hear the conclusion, join us next week with another episode of the MBS show as we conclude uh, the fourth and third episode of part one of the Frisian Shores. Well, the <laughs> conclusion of the Frisian Shores. So, anywho, uh, if you got any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at dimitrogmail.com. You can also reach us on the Twitter. The show's Twitter account is at Norman Sanzo. <laughs> as yet, the media show, and my personal Twitter account is at Norman Sanzo. Uh, Silver, where can the good people find you? <laughs> Uh, the good people can find me in lots of places. You can find me on both uh, Twitter and DeviantArt under MLP Silver Quill, uh, where I post comics and, well, basically make announcements on Twitter. Uh, you can find me posting uh, comic reviews on Equestria Daily on Wednesdays, whenever Yan Comics come out. And you can find me on YouTube. Just do a search for After the Factor Silver Quill. You shall find me. I've Because 2021 has been uh, kicking my booty, uh, pretty hard. I haven't done great on video uploads, but that is going to change. Yeah, yeah. And also, well, just stick around the Twitter. It's like, even though if Silver doesn't upload videos or uh, post, uh, well, um, how to put it? Uh, if he doesn't upload videos or do his Friday Fulfillment streams, he's always active on the Twitter. It's like posting replies or posting stuff. 
And I, I find it those fascinating sometimes when I open and read, oh, what's Silver doing? Oh, that's cool. All oh, right. Okay, cool, 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 cool. So uh, he is active on the Twitters. You are right. <laughs> I am. Very much. Uh, all right. And also, please subscribe and rate us on iTunes, YouTube. Don't forget to press the bell icon to stay up to date. Uh, and also, Stitch Radio. And also, like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on PonyLive.com. Links will be in the show notes. If you'd like to support the show, you can do so at Patreon.com slash MBS Show. With every support, you get a week's early access to review and discussion podcast, exclusive and deleted content. Uh, talking uh, And also, a thank you from me. And talking about thank yous, I would like to thank Lucky Knight, Jeffrey, Master of Lag, and also Tristan. Thank you so much, guys. You are great. So anyway, I have been Norman Sanzo. I am Cecil Raquil. And we'll guys catch you next week with another fun episode of MBS Show. See ya. Adios. I can't wait to wait for next week for another new exciting episode of Pony... Wait, no. Um, <laughs> um, of uh, Season 10 of My Little Pony. Yay! My little abada, my little abada. Oh, Watch no. out for that giant snake thing. <laughs> Yay! Oh, my little zebra, my little zebra. Oh man, my little Kelpie. Oh, that's good. <laughs> the Kelpies are strange. <laughs>